several beside you, hug their neck, make them feel welcome. God is good. Amen. 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 All right. We're finishing up our series today. We're going to wrap up our series on, on hurt. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the different phases of hurt. We talked about physical hurt. We talked about emotional hurt. And today we're going to be talking about spiritual hurt. And so uh, we, uh, we're going to dive into this in just a moment. But uh, I found that this topic can be very, uh, it's very current because right now you have about uh, over 70% of those who don't attend church that used to attend church cite church hurt is one of those reasons. And so um, you can call it church hurt. I call it spiritual hurt or spiritual wounding. Jeremiah thirty seventeen says, For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will hear, heal, declares the Lord, because they have called you an outcast. It is Zion. For whom no one cares. And again, this was an accusation being made by outside nations that God had abandoned them, that nobody cared about Israel, nobody cared about Zion. And God, through the prophet uh, Jeremiah, says to them, No, I'm going to restore your health to you. I'm going to, I'm going to heal your wounds, and I'm going to, to, to uh, declare that you're mine, is basically, is what he's sharing in that. God can heal your hurt. That's just the bottom line. God can heal your hurt, whether it is physical, emotional, or spiritual. This week, we're going to dive into the third topic, as I've said, on spiritual hurt. Many suffer through spiritual hurt, which often becomes chronic spiritual hurt um, that uh, if prolongedly persists in their life, if it goes on, it will tempt them to start questioning God, even uh, tempt them to exclude themselves or isolate themselves. Spiritual hurt can be caused, uh, cause oneself to retreat, in, into ourselves, and it can cause us to never heal because we've, we will never heal in isolation. Spiritual hurt doesn't heal when I isolate myself. Spiritual hurt only heals when I find myself in a, a, a active community of believers, those who love and care and follow the Lord. Spiritual wounds can run deeper than physical wounds or even emotional wounds because spiritual wounds can contribute to those things. Um, they, they, it, can, it can cause me to, to feel emotionally scarred. Just like physical wounds leave scars uh, and emotional wounds leave scars, spiritual wounds can run deep and the scars can be very painful reminders of, uh, of uh, our betrayal or whatever we've went through. Um, today, I'm going to be addressing you here in this congregation, but I'm also going to be specifically addressing those who are watching online, because a lot of you that are watching online, not all of you, you have went through spiritual hurt, and that's why you choose to watch online. And I, I want to address you today, and I'm addressing you in love, and I want you to hear me. Uh, this is out of love, because I feel like you're being robbed of community, and I want to talk to you about that today, as well as those who are here uh, 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 about what it means to really dwell and heal in spirit, real, true, spiritual, authentic community. So spiritual hurt, as I said, can run deep. Spiritual wounds run deep. Um, you might have hurt or pain with spiritual scars. Most spiritual hurt takes place, unfortunately, because of what we call or what is branded as church hurt. Church hurt is one of the most painful experiences a believer can have. Um, it is complicated by nature, and, and many of these uh, things are hard to navigate through. Uh, there are examples of church hurt. We can feel neglected. Miscommunication can take place. Disappointment, conflict, mistreatment of others. All of these are factors and many, many more that can contribute to uh, us feeling like we are hurt or we are spiritually hurt or church hurt. Spiritual hurt, can, uh, however, causes us to isolate and become calloused to the need for spiritual, true spiritual community. Spiritual hurt can also result from us not walking in a relationship with God, but uh, trying to maintain a religious experience. If you're just here for a religious experience, you're going to get disappointed. You're going to get let down from time to time because you can only flourish and grow through authentic community which brings about real relationships in our life. Uh, in other words, if I'm just checking the box, if I'm living a performance-based walk with Christ, and I, I, I go to church or I watch online, and I can check the box, I've went to church or I've watched church online, I've been a part of church, then, then what I am actually doing is I am, 
him, I'm fulfilling a list and, and I'm walking in religion and not relationship. Living for a, a merit-based grace instead of an amazing grace. I think there's a lot of people that think, well, if I do this, then God's going to do that. And if I do good, then that's coming. It's, I've had God do good things for me even when I didn't deserve for him to do good things for me. How about you? I've had God bless me when I didn't deserve to be blessed. I've had God uh, love me when I didn't deserve to be loved. And so I don't live a merit-based gospel. I don't perform to, be, to, to, to have grace. I am given an amazing grace, and that amazing grace is far greater than I can imagine. In other words, I don't get what I deserved. I get, I, 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 I get what, what, what God's mercy and forgiveness and love and grace. In other words, it's an amazing grace that I live for, not a merit grace. Um, whatever the cause of your spiritual hurt, spiritual wounds can be the most challenging type of hurt to deal with. Physical pain can be coped with a lot of times. Even emotional pain can be worked through. But spiritual wounds can run deep because only Christ can heal the spiritual wound. Only Christ can touch what has been wounded in my spirit or when I've been wounded in my heart. Uh, how, do, how do I trust God through my hurt? How can I deal with this? We're going to dive into that, and I'm going to give you six standing principles with Scripture to kind of walk us through this. Now, number one, God understands your pain. It is important for us to understand that God understands our hurt. Uh, and God knows what church hurt is. He knows what spiritual hurt is. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. In other words, church hurt can cause deep wounds, but God understands and cares about your pain this morning. Jesus, having experienced rejection, betrayal, he fully understands what it means. He understands what it means for a church to turn on him. Uh, what are you talking about? Jesus had 12 disciples. Those 12 disciples, he said, I'm putting this handful of corn in a mountain. You're going to grow into something greater than you can imagine. He said, I'm establishing my church. Somebody said, well, the church was established on the day of Pentecost. No, the church was inaugurated on the day of Pentecost. It was empowered on the day of Pentecost. It was established on the mountain. You need to read, read your scripture. He established it. So the very ones that he had brought about, they betrayed him in the garden. Peter denied him three times. The one sold him out for 30 pieces of silver and the rest fled. I want you to think about that. So Jesus understands what it means to be wounded and hurt in the spirit. He looked and he had no one there. I love the fact that maybe his mind even flashed back when he told the disciples, will you leave also? And Peter said, where will we go? You have the words that lead to eternal life. Now all of a sudden they've gone. They've left. They've fled because times got tough. It got hard. So Jesus understands your pain this morning. Jesus has experienced rejection, betrayal, and fully understands the emotional and spiritual hurt that comes uh, and that, that you have to endure sometime from within a church community or outside a church community. Relationship conflicts can, can happen. Somebody got mad and somebody else, uh, now both don't come to go to church at all or only one comes to church. We've got to realize God is ready to heal this. Folks, I'm telling you, Jesus is getting ready to come back. And if you're not watching the news and you're not taking aware of the signs of the times, our Lord and Savior is getting ready to return. I believe that today stronger than I've ever believed it. It's time for the church to come back together. It's time for prodigal sons and daughters to get over their hurt and allow Jesus to heal them through true, authentic church community. That's got to happen. Number two, God calls you to forgiveness and reconciliation. Galatians 3.13 says, bearing with one another. And, and if one has complaint against another, forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you. For So you also must forgive. This was not a request. This was not a, just a nice phrase to put on a table. He was saying, this is a command that with the forgiveness you have been given, you need to offer it to others. And listen, I don't know about you, but God has forgiven. I wonder if anybody, the Lord has forgiven you of much. He has washed many of your sins away. He's still washing. He's still cleansing. He's still working. But yet I want to withhold the love and forgiveness he commands me to give. Oh my goodness. It is not an option according to the Apostle Paul. It is something that we must do. He says for we need to understand that we got to bear with one another. Sometimes you got to bear it out. That's what he's saying. Bearing means you got to, you got to tough it out. Look at somebody beside you say you got to tough it out. You got to tough it out with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, you ever had a complaint against somebody? 
Oh, come on now. Y'all ain't innocent. Complaint? You got a complaint? Some of y'all, you go out to eat, you complain? All right? Bottom line is you ain't cooking it. <laughs> All right. You got to bear through it sometimes. You got to go through it sometimes. While being hurt by others spiritually is painful, God is calling us to pursue. Everybody say pursue. Pursue forgiveness and reconciliation. In other words, we have to pursue forgiveness. We can't just say, I forgive. We got to pursue forgiveness. We got to pursue reconciliation. Now, I shared uh, earlier in, in the first service, and I'll share with you right now, that sometimes you can't, you can't uh, achieve reconciliation with someone who does not want to reconcile with you. You can't do that. But we, when we make the attempt, when we make that effort, then, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I did my part. Now I'm going to leave. The, it's up to them. No, it's not up to them. When you do what you're supposed to do, it now it's in God's hands. It's not in their hands. It's in God's hands. You've heard me share many times that forgiveness is not about you letting somebody off the hook. A lot of times we think, I'm not going to forgive them. I'm not going to forgive them for what they did. What you're saying is that I'm not letting them off the hook. Do you realize the only person that gets let off the hook when you forgive somebody is yourself? No, I'm not allowing them to dominate my thoughts anymore. I'm not allowing them to have that kind of real estate in my thinking anymore. This, from this point on, it is in God's hands. And I want you to understand it's in better hands than your own. Aren't you thankful for that? When you forgive, you release it into the hands of God. For though forgive, through forgiveness, we open the doors to healing in our own heart, allowing God's grace to restore the relationships and bring peace to our lives. When I forgive, when I choose to pursue forgiveness, when I choose to per pursue reconciliation, I'm opening doors to my own healing. You may say, how am I going to be? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. We want God to erase it. But a lot of times what I'm realizing is the more I forgive, the more I seek reconciliation, the more I feel the weight and the burden lifted off of my shoulders. Listen, God is ready to heal you of your hurt, of your spiritual wounded uh, wound, uh, wounds and make you whole. One of the best ways to determine how to forgive others is to look at how much God has forgiven us. How much has God forgiven you of? How much does he forgive? How would you like God to look at you and you come to him and say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I know I've done this a million times. I ask you to forgive me again. And the Lord says, no, nope, that's enough. I've done. I'm done. Aren't you thankful for the amazing mercy of God? Aren't you thankful for the grace of God and the mercy that just see that he, 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 when you ask, he forgives. He's saying you need to pursue and realize when, look, how do I know I'm over something? Hey, you know how you know you're over something? When it's no longer dominating your thoughts. You know you're over it when it no longer has precedence in your thinking, when it no longer overtakes your thoughts, when, 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 when I, I think I'm going to go to church, but, you know, last time I went to church, this happened. When you can put that aside and realize you're not coming to church for any other purpose but to worship your God. Hey, it's important that we have community. Why? Because it, there may be moments when I come to church and I don't really feel like worshiping, but I look over and I watch Riley worship and I realize, you know what, if she can be free, why can't I be? free. And all of a sudden, it don't matter anymore. I'm going to worship my God. You see, we need to realize that we contribute to one another's faith. We contribute to one another having courage to worship God. So again, realizing where God has brought us from can help us to forgive and pursue that, that, that reconciliation. Uh, and now, this is a good one. People are flawed. Look at somebody beside you and say, you are messed up. Come on, tell them. Come on, you're afraid to do it. Tell them. Say, you are messed up. Say, that's okay because I'm messed up. Come on, I'm a messed up person. God is working on me. God is shaping me. God is forming. I'm not, I wasn't perfect when I got saved, but I began my pursuit of Jesus working from the inside, working on the outside, shaping and forming and making me into his image. It's a lifetime process. Anybody agree with that? It's a lifetime process. Sometimes I feel like I take, uh, you know, 10 steps forward and a million steps back. Anybody? But God is working on me. We, can, we are flawed. Uh, I don't care who you are in this room or who you are watching online. All have fallen and come short of the glory of God. All have missed the mark. All have, 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 have come short of, of fulfilling that, that place he wants us to do. Jesus does not disqualify us because he is disappointed with us. Oh, my goodness. That one should get an amen. 
God, Jesus does not disqualify us because he's let down in us or disappointed in us. How many of you would say you did, you know, you never disappointed Jesus? I, I'm not going to raise my hand. I've never, how many would say they go a whole day without disappointing him? At least you think you did. Come on, come on. What I'm saying is, listen, aren't you thankful that you're not disqualified because of his disappointment? Yes, I let him down from time to time. Yes, I don't do everything he commands me to do. Sometimes I fall short of the mark. And I want to share this with, for all have sinned and come short. You know what that means? This is a marksman term. It's used in archery uh, in the Greek language. What it simply means is you just come short of the bullseye. That's what it means. In other words, aren't you thankful Jesus doesn't come just short of the bullseye? He hits the mark every single time. And when I turn my life fully to him, he hits the mark. He hits the mark. He fulfills his promises for all who have sinned and come short or just missed the mark. Uh, He is always ready to forgive us. Aren't you thankful for that? He is always, he has pursued me with forgiveness and, and reconciliation. He has pursued you. With, how, how, how do you know he's pursued me? He pursued you from heaven's throne to a manger, from a manger to a cross, and from a cross to, to a grave, and from a grave to hell, from hell and back and then to heaven. He has pursued you with his love and his forgiveness, wanting to reconcile you to the Father. I wonder if anybody gets excited about that. That's how much he's loved you. That's how much he's loved me. He pursued reconciliation with me. Number three, God heals through authentic community or through community. James 5, 16 says, Therefore confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Now, a lot of times we, we, we just limit this passage of Scripture pertaining to the physical body because physical hurt is tangible. We can see it. Emotional hurt. We can hide it really well, but you know, if you get hurt physically, sometimes it's hard to hide that wound or that hurt. But but emotionally, you can bury it. Spiritually, you can bury it. What it's this scripture says: confess. He says, "What therefore confess your sins one to another." I told somebody once they come to me, they were telling me everything they had done, and I looked at him finally and said, "Look, I am not a priest." I'm not a priest. I do not have the power to absolve you of your sins, but I can point you to a high priest that does. I can point you to Calvary, and at Calvary's cross, you can be forgiven of everything you've just told me about. I want you to understand you have a great grace available to you today. And so he says, though, confess your sins to one another. What is he saying? He's saying there is power when I begin to talk about what's hurt me, when I begin to, to not talk in a negative light, but to find godly people, God community, authentic Christian community where I can find love, where I can find healing, where I can find somebody that has something positive to say. You can find a negative opinion anywhere you want, and it usually begins between your own ears. Come on. All right? How do I know you? How many of you got up this morning and looked in the mirror, and first thing you said is, wow, look at you, looking good. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're like, man, we got some work to do before we go to church. We got some work. We got to shave his face. We got, we got to, you know, oh, we got to do some work before we get to the house of God. Because I ain't ready to go out. The other day, me and Tina was running to get some, some mums for reports. And she said, well, we can just go down to Tractor Supply. I ain't putting no makeup on. Maybe we'll not run into anybody. And she lucked out because we didn't run into anybody we knew at that particular time. But most of the time, we run into everybody we know when she does that. Everybody we know. Amen. I believe the Lord knows how to humble us. I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm picking at her. Listen, what are we saying? Look, we, we look at ourselves and we see our flaws. We see our mistakes. We see, we see that we need to look. You need something positive in your life. And church needs to be a place, not of that we check our brain at the door. I can't, I, I don't want that kind of church where we're not plugged into reality. Yes, the world is negative. Yes, there are bad things there. But you know what? When we come to the house of God, we need to look. It takes no effort to pick out what's wrong. It takes some effort to say what's right. I would rather talk about what God's doing than what the devil's doing. How about that? I would rather give God praise in this service today than to give the enemy any credit in this place today. Amen. Amen. I ask him in the early service, I'm going to ask you, have you ever been to an old time testimony service? Anybody? Raise your hand if you have. Old time testimony. See, some of y'all haven't because I refuse to have them anymore. Amen. Because <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes the devil got more credit than Jesus. Am I right? 
Oh, come on now. I just want y'all to pray for me. My husband's crazy. My kids are possessed. <sighs> Our car's bad. Our bank account's awful. The devil's been on my back. Oh, he's riding me. Oh, he's riding me. But to God be the glory, y'all pray for me. You know you've heard it. <laughs> You know you've heard them. And the devil gets all this praise and all, and we're not intentionally doing it. But oh, I'd rather say, though he slay me, yet will I serve him and trust him. I'm going to praise my God because my worst day is better with Jesus than any day without him. Somebody, you need to concentrate on the positive. Church community should be a positive environment. Amen. Amen. Through the, uh, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm praying. Help me, Jesus, get through this. Through her people, by, uh, that no matter what we go through, we need to understand that authentic, real church community should be building up, not tearing down. Healing comes when we surround ourselves with people who believe in us and love us. Now, believing and loving doesn't mean supporting and, and applauding my wrong. Amen? You know what a real friend that loves you, a real friend that really loves you, they're going to be willing to point out, your, you know, hey, maybe you need to look at that a different way. Maybe you need to be open. The, the Bible says to be open for rebuke. We take that in a negative light. It doesn't mean it in a negative light. He says be open for correction. Be open for correction. I'm going to tell you something. If you, uh, how many of you... <laughs> You go to, if you went to your math teacher, if you're in school or you've been in school, you went to your math teacher and say, I don't, I'm not sure I'm doing this problem right. And they go, oh, that looks pretty good. And you go and you do it on the test and you do it exactly like you showed her. And then you failed. And you go to them and said, I did this exactly like you showed me. Yeah, but I just didn't want to hurt your feelings. I just, did, I just didn't want to hurt your feelings. So I let you do it the wrong way, but I didn't want to hurt your feelings. But now you failed. Listen, folks, a true a true brother, a true sister in Christ. We all need them. There's some people that will misuse your trust. I know that. I've seen it happen. I've had it happen to me. But there are good people who will look at you and listen, somebody needs refrigerator rights in your spiritual life. What do you mean? If, if you've got refrigerator rights in my house, that means you don't have to ask me if you want something from the refrigerator. You just go get it. That's refrigerator rights. Somebody needs to have rights in your life that you can go to and say, look, I'm handling this situation, but I don't know if I'm handling it right. And, they, and look, somebody really loves you. If you're not handling it right, we'll point it out to you. And if they really love you, they're trying to help you. Look, it would be like you going to a doctor and you having all the signs of cancer and them saying, well, you know, if you'd have come in here six months ago, uh, you know, and, and I started treating you, you would have lived. You said, but I was in here six months ago. And you said, everything looked good. Well, it didn't look good. I just didn't want you to feel bad. I didn't want you to get mad. I didn't want you to get upset. No, if they're a good doctor, they're going to tell you what is wrong because they're wanting you to go on a path of healing. Listen, there are plenty of churches that will pat you on the back and tell you okay when you're not, but I would rather be where I am corrected by the power and the Word of God so that, look, real love will accept correction. Amen. Real love gives correction. My parents corrected me. Did anybody else? Amen. Anybody ever met a child that's not corrected? They're a brat. Brats are not born, they're made. Come on. Come on. You know, the worst looks I ever got was when I took Paige when she was real little. Tina was not here, and I had her at a service, and she was acting up, and I took her down the hall, and I spanked her little tail, and I put her back in there and made her sit down. Every lady in the church was mad at me. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I don't even want to know what's coming from the cheap seats over there. I don't want to know. We give them seats away. Anything in the front, you don't even get charged to sit in. True correction's not easy, but true correction shows love. I've got to be willing. Look, true community is a place of positivity, but it's a place of love. It's a place of, of somebody believing in me, but it's also a place where I can be corrected in love. Healing comes when we surround ourselves with people who love us and believe in us. In other words, we do not know, 
Uh, how do we know when I am truly over my spiritual hurt? It is when I no longer have it present in my thoughts constantly. It doesn't mean I won't think about it. It just means it's not a constant thing in my life. The, it, it, it's like this. Somebody says, um, well, I'm over that girl. I'm over that boy. If you keep talking about them for three or four months, you're not over them. That one was for free. Come on. You're not over it. The devil wants to keep you from, from true spiritual community. And, and he'll give you, well, guess what? People are leaving church today because of weak preaching. Uh, uh, the, the authority of the church is not there anymore. They don't, they don't, they don't teach. They don't correct. Poor, poor children's and students' ministry programs. They're, the, the neglect of pastoral care, personal sin, burnout, no, con, no connectedness. That's a big one. People are not connecting. And look, they're using church hurt as a reason not to connect. I, I don't want to get that involved. I don't want to put it, I don't want to risk it. Look, I found that in life you cannot receive benefits without risk. You, can't, you cannot receive anything without risk. If you don't ever have the courage to do something, you'll never receive the benefits. Uh, you know, uh, how many remembers when they were in school? Now, us, now y'all text it. But, but when I was in school, if you liked somebody, you sent them a note. And that note say, do you like me? Yes, no, or maybe. And they'd have little boxes there. Yes, no, or maybe. I remember when one of the prettiest girls in my class handed me a note, and she said, oh, that's not for you. It's for him. I said, okay. She turned her back, and I put no and handed it back to her. Oh, true story. I was like, you got one option left right here. And I'm a maybe now, baby. <laughs> God help me. Anyway. Having a flashback, y'all pray for me. All right. You got to risk something. You got to put something out here. If I had never asked Tina out or, you know, if she'd have never begged me to go out with her, um, just kidding. Oh, y'all think that? Okay. Brad, I know Carrie. I, I, I know that story. It's sad. It's sad. Anyway. Y'all don't know how that woman tortures me. Isn't it good to laugh in the house of God? Isn't it good? Listen, that spiritual community, church shouldn't always be a place where we're getting beat up. We should leave here encouraged and lifted up. And yes, sometimes we should leave here torn down. Yes. Sometimes we should leave here broken in our hearts so that God can expose what needs to be healed but guess what? He's not going to leave you that way. Aren't you thankful? Because the Bible says he came to bind up the brokenhearted. But yes, sometimes he's the one that breaks the heart in order so that he might expose the things that are not like him so that I might be a whole person. I want to be what God wants me to be. How about you? So people leave for a lot of reasons. Listen, not just church members experience church hurt. An average of 200 to 500 per month pastor, pastors are leaving churches. That, now, some of it is self-inflicted through moral uh, failure failures and, 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 and other reasons that they, they, they self-inflicted, but the largest majority, over 78 per, or 73 percent of them, they are leaving just because they are burnt out and they are tired and they are wounded and they are beat up. And I'm telling you, you will never understand the fullness of all weight of the office of a pastor till you occupy it. And this isn't a woe is me message. I'm just saying church hurt can go both ways. It's a double-edged sword, but I'm here to tell you, I am thankful because of every negative God has brought 10 more positive in my life because I'm going to tell you you're never going to please everybody all the time but aren't you thankful that I'm not here to please anybody you're not here to please anybody but the Lord Jesus we want to give God the praise we want to give God the glory he called me he called you to be what he wants you to be so people are leaving. People are hurt. People are upset this guess what the numbers after COVID have not recovered globally of church attendance. The majority, 61% of people, say that they do not believe in-person worship is necessary anymore. That's the Barner survey. 61%. It's not necessary anymore. But I'm here to tell you, the only way you're truly going to experience community and fellowship and connection is when we come together. And the Bible says, look, how many believe the Lord is coming soon? Well, if you truly believe that, the Bible says there's an injunction written in the Word that says, if you believe He's coming close at hand, then you should be getting to together more not less more not less devotion must happen to the word the pursuit of holiness is a sign of a healthy church 
a commitment to God-centered and Christ-centered worship, true, authentic, Christ-like love, genuine unity, godly leadership, and a commitment to the Great Commission and the evangelism of the lost world. That is the identifying marks of an authentic community of believers. An authentic community of believers is not about themselves. They're about the work of Jesus. I want you to know right now, I don't care if you know my name, but I do care if you know of the name of the one who sent me. Please leave here knowing that Jesus is the one who saves and heals and restores. That's who matters. Amen. Amen. God, number four, is your ultimate shepherd and healer. Psalms 23, 1 through 3, very familiar passage of Scripture says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Another translation puts it this way. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. I want to just kind of break this down to you. Number one, the Lord is the shepherd of the flock. He is the good shepherd. Amen? Now, I'm a shepherd, but he is the chief shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Amen? He's the head of all things. He says, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He supplies my needs and he gives me rest. Places, good, good things to eat. Amen? Green grass to eat. That's what he's saying. Green, good, good food to eat and he supplies rest. And then he says, what? He leads me beside the still waters. For those of you that don't know, sheep are, well, sheep are dumb. They are. They're not smart creatures. And sheep... If they look at water that's moving, get disoriented, and they can fall in, and because of their wool, they'll weigh down and drown. They will. So they have to be led to still water so it's safe for them to drink. Aren't you thankful that our God doesn't put us in danger, but he leads us to the still waters? And then last of all, what? He restores my soul. He refreshes my soul. He heals my hurt and wounded soul. When people in church fail us, it is important for us to remember God is the ultimate shepherd. Even when church leadership or members cause pain, God himself guides, comforts, heals our wounded spirits. Understanding Christ is the head of all things brings peace to me during troubled times. How about you? Knowing that Christ is in charge brings great peace to me. Amen? As a matter of fact, when I get overwhelmed as the pastor of this church, it, great, it, great, it gives me great relief to go into my prayer closet and say, guess what, Lord? These are your people. Don't you love the arguments Moses and, and, and God would have over the children of Israel? It was basically, it would go like this. <clears throat> God, they're your people. God would say, no, Moses, they're your people. <laughs> Moses would be like, I am not taking responsibility for these folks. They're your people. He is the good shepherd. And he loves you. And I'm telling you, aren't you thankful you're his people? Amen. You're his people. I'm his people. Again, understanding he's the ultimate shepherd. Even when church has failed me, even when spirituality seems to fail me, God himself guides, comforts, heals our wounded spirits. Understanding Christ is the head of all things should bring peace to you. When people fail you, trust in the Lord. Number five, God let me down. I shared with him in the early service. Jacob said, did you mistype that? I said, nope, it's exactly the way I want it to be. God let me down. Another reason some people are wounded in their spirits is because they feel like God let them down. And I want to say they feel like. Isaiah 55, 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Many people are hurt spiritually because they feel like God did not hold up his end of the bargain. Some of this has been brought about by misrepresentations in the pulpit of what being saved means. I have heard it preached that when you get saved, all your troubles go away. When you get saved, all your worries go away. 
I want to submit to you this morning, you will never hear me preach that. As a matter of fact, you might hear me say something like I'm about to say. When you get saved, there is a target painted on your back and hell comes after you. When you are, there's two reasons the devil's leaving you alone. Two reasons. Either you belong to him, so he's already got you, so why bother with you? Or you are a saved Christian and you decide you want to start making a difference. Listen, the devil is completely content with Christians who want to sit and be consumers. He's content with that. He may not be happy you're on your way to heaven, but if all you want to do is sit and consume, he's good with that. But the moment you begin to tell your friends about Jesus, the moment you begin to try to spread his love, the moment you begin to try to affect your community, the minute you try to affect uh, those around you with the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, the devil will come after you with everything he's got. When you get saved, he never promised you heaven here, but he said through many trials and tribulations will you enter the kingdom of heaven. We're going to walk through stuff on this earth. We're going to go through the valley of the shadow of death. But guess what the word declares? I will fear no evil for he is what with me, his rod, his staff, they comfort me. You're going to go through things, but aren't you thankful that Jesus is leading you and guiding you through it? Amen. 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 So if you were told that, it was a lie. It's not true. The fact is, your problem's probably going to increase if you get saved. Have you ever heard somebody say, I tried God and it just didn't work for me? Anybody ever heard that? Oh, I've heard it. I hear it all the time. Well, I tried that church thing. I tried that God thing. It just didn't work for me. What they're doing, <laughs> listen to me. Therein lies the problem. You can't try God on for size. You can't try him on like a pair of pants in a dressing room. And because they don't look right, throw them aside and say, I don't like them. That's the problem. You don't try God on. <laughs> you don't try him on for size. You don't, you, don't, you don't make him fit your life. You make your life fit him. Amen? He's the potter. We're the clay. You trade your life in for the one that he wants you to have. When you got saved, when I got saved, what we're saying is I am no longer my own. He did not come to rent you. He came to purchase you. He came to own you. He came to redeem you. He came to save you, and he came to change you into what he wants you to be. God is not something you try on. He inhabits our lives. He lives through us, and he becomes our definition of life. When I surrender to him, I I am crucified with him so that he can live through me. It comes to the point where I have to say, Lord, I'm not trying you on to see if you fit me. I'm surrendering for you to make me what you want me to be. Amen. He's not a one size fits all. He is making you into what he wants to be. Number six, this is our last one. God will restore and strengthen you. First Peter 5, 10 offers this encouragement. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of, of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, comfort, strengthen, and establish you. I'm going to break this down. He says, and after you have suffered a little while, didn't say if you suffer. He said, after you have, you are going to go through things. You are. I am going to go through things. We're going to walk through problems, and we're going to walk through trials. We're going to walk through, through people problems, spiritual problems, financial problems. We're going to walk through health issues. This, this is a deteriorating, broken world, and we live in it, and we're going to be affected by it. We're going to walk through things. But aren't you thankful for the comfort that, it, that comes to this? He says, you're going to suffer for a little while. Then God, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself. He's not putting this up to an angel. He's not leaving it up to one of the heavenly hosts. He's saying, I myself am going to do some things for you. He says, the God of all grace, Christ himself will restore. He will confirm. He will strengthen. And he will establish you. He will bring wholeness to your life. I want you to know you can rejoice this morning because you may not see it all in this life, but there is coming a day when we will stand before the Lord when he will fully fulfill every word that has been spoken in the word. He will fully restore. He will fully confirm and strengthen and establish us. You may feel spiritually shaken after experiencing spiritual or church hurt, but God promises to restore and strengthen you if you'll let him. 
If you'll let the great physician, he'll do some heart surgery on you. He'll do some restoration in your life, but you got to let him. God's grace will heal your wounds and restore your faith, helping you to emerge stronger and more grounded in his love. God will restore your determination to serve him. God will create a love for him like you've never had before and a love for others like you've never had before. If you will allow God to do it this morning, he will take what the enemy meant to wound you spiritually and to keep you from being a part of something that is amazing known as the community of faith, and he will make you strong stronger than you've ever been before, but you've got to bring it to Jesus this morning. You've got to bring your woundedness. You've got to bring your hurt. You've got to bring everything to him, whether it falls into the category of physical or spiritual or emotional. We've got to bring it to him because the Bible says he came to heal all of our diseases, and I'm here to tell you whether you're plagued in your body, your mind, or your spirit, he will bring and restore wholeness to you, for by his stripes we are healed. Oh, somebody Everybody praise him this morning. <laughs> Through church hurt or spiritual hurt can be deeply painful to all of us. God heals. God's power is healing and transforming those wounds into opportunities for growth, forgiveness, and renewal. By trusting in him, we can find restoration and continue to build up our faith. Even when we have seen pain, we can become whole. And I just want to end with this. I want us to bring this to a close with this. No matter if, if you didn't walk through stuff, you would never grow. You would never grow. I would never grow. If we don't walk through things, we don't grow. And if God did it all for us without us going through some effort, some kind of, it's, it's like this. I can remember, um, and I'm not against this. Don't, don't go out here saying pastors. You know, I, I, I can remember that, you know, when I was in high school, they were getting their driver's license. They'd roll in brand new cars. And they didn't take care of those cars. They didn't care about those cars because they had no effort in earning them. They were just giving them. And if you were given a car and you took care of it, good for you. I'm glad. I'm just saying I would watch this in my own experience, and they didn't care about what they had. When you've got some skin in the game, you care about what you have. Come on. When you, when you've got, when you paid a price for something, you care about it a lot more than, than when you don't. Matter of fact, Paige makes the mistake of parking behind us sometimes, and she runs off to lunch with somebody, and we jump in the car, and we drive her car, because I'm not backing all those cars out to get to ours. She's like, y'all drove my car. It's like, you better believe it. She didn't care about the Honda like that. But you know what? She works, she works a, a, a really hard to make her payments and to keep that up. She's got skin in the game. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm so thankful Jesus paid the price for me. But it's time for me to stand up and serve him. And say, you know what? People are going to be people. But Jesus didn't hurt me. He heals me. Yeah. Amen. Will you stand? Our theme verse, Jeremiah 30 and 7. 17 says, For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord, because they have called you an outcast. It is Zion for whom no one cares. He said, Because they say you're neglected, I'm here. I'm here. This morning, I want us to close our eyes for just a moment, bow our heads. If you're at home, I, I really want you to listen to me if you're watching online. Because I really feel like that the enemy is using past hurts, especially spiritual hurts, to keep us from community and to keep us from where we need to be. To grow and to have connection with people the way we need to. This morning, I want to challenge you in this room. If you've ever been through hurt, spiritual hurt, Maybe it was caused by church hurt, but spiritual hurt of any form. Maybe it's that hurt I talked about where we feel like God didn't hold up his end of things. Maybe that's part of the hurt I feel. And I, 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 I'm shameful to even admit it, but I, I feel that in my heart. that I prayed and it just didn't happen. This morning, I want you to know Jesus is ready to heal you and to restore you. 
It's time to lay that stuff aside so that we can be invested in the kingdom the way that we need to be. Invested in what's going on, not consuming, but contributing to the work of God in this world because God is ready to do a work in our community. Do you believe that? I believe that. God is ready. And I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be done through the pastors in this community. It's going to be done through the everyday people who love Jesus in this room and in other rooms today gathered all over this county and churches that would say to themselves, I'm ready to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I'm not going to allow something from the past to keep me from being that anymore. It's time for me to heal and move on. Now, this altar call is not just for those who are spiritually wounded. This is for those who may be physically or emotionally wounded in their hearts and minds. Today is a day of healing. I feel that with all my heart. Folks, I feel like the waters are troubled in this room. I feel like those that are watching online, the waters are troubled. They're in your living room or they're in your car, wherever you're watching. And I believe God's ready to restore you. You say, is this a pitch to get us to come to harvest? No, this is a pitch to get you in a house of God somewhere, serving. Somewhere. Serving. If it's here, we'd love to have you, but, but I want you somewhere. Serving and loving God. Some, there's talent that has not been given to the body of Christ that's been withheld because of church hurt and wounded spirits. This morning, if you're in this room and you're saying, Pastor, I realize this morning I've allowed things from the past to dictate where I stand with God for too long, I have a wound in my spirit. It goes beyond just my emotions. It goes beyond just the physical. It's a wound in my spirit that I need God to heal this morning. If you could be bold enough this morning, will you just raise your hand? Come on. Be bold enough this morning. Be strong enough this morning. God's ready to do a work in you. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel the love of the Lord in this room right now. There's some others. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just slip your hand up if you haven't, and you're, you're in that place. You're saying, Pastor, I'm needing to move on, but I've, I've been stuck. I've been stuck. Just can't seem to go forward. I just can't seem to get back past it. I want you to know you're not going to get past it by reasoning it out. You're going to get past it at the cross. You're going to get past it when you give it all to Jesus this morning. And if that's you and you raise your hand, here's the next bold step. I want you to slip out of your seat. And I want some brothers to pray with our brothers, some sisters to pray with our sisters. There is no judgment in this house this morning. God's ready to restore. Will you come? Come on. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Come on, there's some others. Take that step. Take somebody by the hand. Say, I, I need my heart restored. I need my wounded spirit restored. It's just been too long. Come on, there's some others. Be bold this morning. I promise you, you will not regret making a move for the Lord this morning. You will not regret coming forward this morning. You will not regret it this morning. You will leave here whole. You will leave here on a journey of healing. But you got to be willing to make that move this morning. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? I'm begging you. Don't leave here hurting. Don't leave here wounded. Leave here whole. Leave here whole. Come on, leave here whole this morning. Leave here restored in your spirit, restored in your walk. Leave here with no wounds. Well, ask for those that will. Help us pray with these. Help us pray with these.
I want you to reach out, take somebody by the hand. I want you to begin to pray for them, that God would use them, that God would use them, use them with their family, use them at work, use them in their relationships with people, that God will begin to use them, that they would realize right now, that person that you're holding the hand of, they would realize right now God has a work for them. Can you just begin to pray for them? Come on, all over this room, those that are watching online, let's begin to pray for each other. The Bible says to lift up one another, to make supplication for one another. Let's begin to pray for one another. Let's begin to pray for our church, that it would be the kind of community that God wants it to be. It would be the kind of church where unity and love and, 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 and mercy and grace would abide. It would be the kind of church that he purchased, the kind of church he wants us to be, that it would be authentic community, real church community. Come on, pray for one another. Father, help us. Help us this morning. Help us this morning. Help us this morning. We 